Yes, Katie's back. Yes. <laughs> I would not miss this one. Last but not least, we're sitting here with Taylor, who just made it off of her flight. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here, Taylor. Would you mind telling live stream audience a little bit more about what you do, your role, and um, what excites you about circularity? Oh, absolutely. Um, I'm Taylor Curtis. I'm a regulatory and policy analyst and uh, attorney by trade at the National Renewable Energy Laboratory, which is a lab of the U.S. Department of Energy. And NREL has been working in the circularity space to create um, a circular, circular economy for energy materials for quite some time now, over a decade. And it's actually one of our three core research, research objectives, kind of recognizing some of the challenges, but also the opportunities around in this space. Um, it's just a really, really exciting time to be a part of circularity and, and the energy, energy transition. Could you break it down a little bit more? So when you talk about things in the energy um, materials, are you talking about grids and panels and buildings and generators? What are, what do you? Yeah. So um, it, the whole the whole package. So we are looking at everything from the very beginning to the designing of the products. Like our 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 lab and our what I call our coat and goggle researchers at the lab are designing project. Uh, products with intention and that that starts from trying to get our materials from um, not only sustainable but also also ethical um, sources um, so we are looking to for instance um, <clears throat> design PV panels with uh, less less materials in general um, so that it can reduce the life cycle impacts that really has an impact on um, reducing carbon emissions from um, <clears throat> you know man manufacturing, transporting, and mining those materials. We're trying to recover those res resources at home domestically. Um, another big piece to that is design for durability. Yeah. So our, our lab technicians are designing, for instance, a fully recyclable wind blade. Yeah, <laughs> so <laughs> cool. Very exciting. Um, we're also working on designing products for longer lifespans. So um, we're designing, you know, right now, PV modules or PV panels or 25, 30 year lifespan, but we're working on, um, our durability team is working on designing a 50 year old 50 year panel. Um, that is so cool. Super it's cool. It's very cool. <laughs> we're also looking at vulnerabilities in the supply chain and we you know, uh, the United States is heavily reliant on imports. Um, so that's something that we're really focusing on and how we can recover these resources from at home. Yeah. I would have to say, if you don't find like a total way to do the blades, <laughs> yeah. like I would absolutely have one in my house. They are <laughs> yeah, so can we get beautiful one? <laughs> of all the things. I like, know, right? I mean, those are like I could see solar panel um, kitchen counters, something like that. <laughs> all right, know, you guys are. I love it. You guys have been innovating for like decades. I'm sure you've come up with. A much there is some solutions. pretty cool stuff that the that the lab's working on for sure. Everything you said, I, I think so many people don't think about that. Like we think about these sustainable solutions like wind panels or sorry, not wind panels, solar panels and wind turbines. And we're like, great, that's that's it. We never think about what happens to that solution because we see it as like an end game. So what is something that most people don't understand about the intersection of energy and circularity? Other than what everything you just said, <laughs> I mean, it, it's the the concept of circularity applies to our energy resources. You know, it, there is economic, environmental, as well as national security and supply chain resiliency, um, very similar to allied partners. And something that in our panel um, tomorrow that we're going to really work on connecting the dots on are who are those allied industries and how are they connected to the renewable energy industry? And there's a lot of different partners. And, and it's just really, really cool to kind of connect those dots. What are some of the main collaborations that you've seen to be a success? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, everything from, you know, um, we work internationally. So we work with um, sub subnational and national governments. Um, we also do a lot of partnerships with, with industry. Um, we, we work with them um, in like the design phase to bring that renewable energy um, to, to market. Um, so we have, you know, test, testing facilities to do that in a more controlled way. Um, but I think some of our, our really, really strong partnerships is that that triangle of, you know, industry partners with with government and um, 
industry labs like ourselves. That's very encouraging to hear because I feel like there was a period of time where partnering with government agencies was like, I don't want to even touch it. Yep. Um, but there is such a an appetite for getting the stuff done mm -hmm. that I'm hoping that that has also kind of overcome some of those barriers. Oh, absolutely. I think there's, there's a lot of motivation and interest in this right now. Um, it is in the interest of the industry, um, you know, to be continue to be regenerative, restorative. It's part of the name of renewable energy, um, and it's it, there's a ton of different benefits for you know sub subnational and and um, national governments as well. I love that. Um, is there anything that you're really looking forward to that you're working on like right now that you're like, ooh, I, if this happens this year, that is going to be a win. <laughs> Tell the world. <laughs> I think one of the big things that we're working on is to provide tools and resources um, and objective data to kind of help dispel some of the misinformation uh, about um, you know, PV panels, for instance, around toxicity. And we're working with um, National EPA and Department of Transportation and all the experts um, within, within the industry to, um, to help understand what those those uh, concerns are and address those in a meaningful way. And before I end this off, I'd like to ask you, um, what gives you hope? I think it's just like how how much it has grown. I've been in um, working in the circularity um, field for you know about six years now and it is just it is fascinating to see the new technologies and just the motivation and it, it's you know it's not just a hot topic there are are really fundamental like systemic changes that are, are being taking place great thank you so much taylor it's been so nice to have you we appreciate you coming right off your flight to yeah. this interview and to our live stream audience, this is our last interview. You'll be seeing Katie and I's face at GreenBiz 25. Um, but we are so thankful for um, our interviewees, our sponsors, our keynote speakers, our lovely attendees who've poured their travel, their, um, their money and their time and their minds and their hearts into um, this conference. I agree. It's been wonderful. We'll see you next time.